and welcome to Our Mind Gym with Renee, a Team Ferris original production where we believe that motocross is more than just going fast. It is an empowering vehicle that teaches us how to navigate life. Join us weekly as we discuss the life lessons and growth mindset that give us a competitive advantage both on and off the track. Hey, hey, it's Wednesday and welcome back to another episode of Our Mind Gym podcast series. I'm your host, Renee Ferris, and today I'm going to discuss why neutralizing our emotions can keep us safe. This is one of those concepts that may trigger some of you. It's not something that's easily accepted, but I assure you that if you take the time to understand it and learn to govern yourself, you will have a far smoother ride as the world won't need to do it for you. So what am I talking about? I am talking about those moments when you're on such a high that you feel invincible And then before you know it, you're picking yourself up off the ground and wondering what the hell happened. I'm talking about that time that you absolutely crushed it in Moto 1, then fell to pieces in Moto 2. I'm talking about that time you were crushing it at motocross, then getting slammed at school. You see, we're all governed by universal laws that will not be outrun. Just like gravity, we can't escape them. These universal laws are thought to be intrinsic, unchanging laws that our universe and ancient cultures have always intuitively known. The particular universal law that I'm referring to today is the law of rhythm, which tells us that our body's capacity for pain and pleasure in each individual is balanced. And therefore, however far we go one way, we'll swing back to the other or to the same degree, which means that however high you go in terms of being elated, which is like a heightened state of excitement or infatuated, which is an obsessively strong desire for something or someone, determines how far you fall. I find imagining it like a pendulum swing helps me to grasp the concept. We also see this playing out a lot when it comes to our fears. The more we infatuate with something and want it, the greater we fear the loss. One of the most interesting things that we learned about this cycle is just how the swing comes back down and your body finds its way back to balance. I'm going to run you through a quick visualization exercise to help you explain this one. As I'm talking, I want you to imagine that you are the pendulum, starting at a balanced and poised state in the center. Anything positive will pull you to the left and anything negative will pull you to the right. Okay, so close your eyes or maybe if you're walking or driving, maybe keep them open. Okay, now it's February 2023. You've been training hard all summer long and today is D-Day. The first race of the season is here. You go out for your first moto, you pull a massive hole shot and you execute exactly as you practiced. You hit your marks and you win the race by a dominating 25 second lead. Then when you come off the track, everyone's stoked for you. They're cheering and celebrating all the way back to the tent. A whole bunch of people are telling you how great you are, puffing you up. And even the people from the other camps are out yelling, good race, mate. Your body then responds to the external stimuli and releases dopamine and other addictive chemicals that make you feel good. Now, you're highly elated and feeling on top of the world. You can't wipe the smile off your face. The problem is that now your body's chemistry is out of balance and can only withstand this state for a short period of time. So the self-governing process begins. Firstly, in your mind, your intuition will try to guide you back to balance. As more people are puffing you up and making out like you're too good to be true, your internal bullshit meter goes off and that little voice in your head will give you a little nudge to remind you there's still one race to go and it was only one moto. But let's just say you ignore this. You've waited so long to be on top. You worked your ass off all off season. You deserve this. You want to feel this moment for a bit longer. You want people to look at you the way that you used to look at the guys on top. So you squish that voice and you absorb yourself in the external world again. You walk through the pits to the canteen, stopping along with everyone who will chat to you about how amazing your first moto was. Now, because you're not listening internally anymore, you move into stage two. Physiologically, your body starts to mirror how you're feeling inside in an attempt to bring to your attention. Your chest puffs out. You wear a, I'm so good, smirk, and you walk around looking like a rooster. But, You don't pay any attention to how this would make you look from the outside, to the people you beat, to the families of the other riders. You're just basking in the feeling of being on top. You just keep strutting your stuff all the way back to the pits, 
pumped up and ready to crush him for Moto 2 and take the overall. The universe is ordering you back to balance, but you're on such a high that you're completely oblivious to the signs. You don't even notice. You imagine yourself standing on the top step, thanking your sponsors and posting on social media about how great your day was. That'll definitely keep this feeling alive. Obviously, nothing internally is working to balance you. So now, stage three begins. Your energy and your vibration shift and you start magnetizing social conflict. Depending on how far you've swung to the left will determine on how strong the pull to the right will be. You might experience things like a competitor making a protest or someone making a backhanded comment minimizing your result. Or if someone in your family can see that you're getting a little bit overconfident, they might try to give you some advice that in your current state comes across as negative or they don't believe in me. Now, because you don't yet understand the cost of your imbalanced emotions, you disregard all the social conflict and put that down to their fault. And you just put your game face back on, even more determined to make it happen again. You're hungry for that next win. You don't wanna lose this feeling. You want everyone to know that you're the man. So you line up for the next moto with everything on the line. It's win at all costs. You just want that same feeling that you got when you crossed the finish line in moto one. But because you aren't starting from a balanced state, you're highly emotional and you can't logically think your way through the race. So you subconsciously move into stage four, forcing the universe to intervene. You don't even get halfway through the moto before you find yourself flat on your face. You see the yellow flag come out but you can't get up. Now the Ambo flag's out. You're slapped in the face with a big fat DNF and enough physical pain to swing you far enough back to the left that your body reaches homeostasis again. But now, because you are so infatuated with the feeling of winning, you deeply resent the crash and the pain that you swing yourself past the state of balance, now into resentment. You sit in a bitter swing at home during the recovery process. The four step process begins again until you see the hidden beauty in your time off. Learn your lessons and make a full recovery before you go and do it all again. For those of you with your eyes closed, you can open them now. So long story short, this four step universal governing process will continue on a rhythmic cycle until you raise your level of awareness to recognize when you're swinging and allow your intuition to guide you back into balance with an expanded perspective of both the good and the bad in every situation. Now, each situation will look slightly different in terms of the form in which each stage comes in, but the basic model is stage one, internal intuition, stage two, internal physical symptoms, stage three, external social influence, stage four, theological like major event. Now, if you feel challenged by this statement, I'd encourage you to look back at any major injury or event that you've suffered and see where or how this has played out. What was your state prior to the incident? What signs were there that you missed in hindsight? It's important to note though at this point that it doesn't always have to be in the form of overconfidence. It can also simply just be an infatuation with the result. If you think that somehow life is only gonna be good once you get that win, or once you get whatever, you'll attract humbling circumstances that attempt to show you that life has amazing things to offer at every level, regardless of where you are at in your journey. Now today I've given the example in motocross because that's what I love about sport so much is that its feedback is so obvious and often immediate. In our everyday life, we have these same experiences that it's not always like as clear or as easy to visualize and see. So I found this when I went back into my past memories and looked at like the humbling situations that I found myself struggling through and could see how and why they unfolded the way that they did. I truly believe that life is always trying to teach us and help us to be more present in the moment to truly enable us to enjoy the human experience. So if you're listening and you're not a racer, I challenge you to look at where this has played out for you in business, in family life, in relationships, in your finances, that's a huge one. This is also why so many people can't hang on to large windfalls when they receive them. But that's a story for another day. I wanna wrap this one up 
by sharing some advice that Dean and I were given some time ago when we first learned about this. And that was, strive to become the rare, non-reactive nobleman who remains untouched by both praise and reprimand. We also have a saying in our house that we got from one of my mentors, Tanya, that we often refer to, which is, take no credit, take no blame, just keep focused on Chi fame. Now, I don't want you to leave this podcast and feel like you can't ever feel good again. That is absolutely not what I am saying. But what I do hope you take away from this is that getting wrapped up in either praise or reprimand will cause you suffering if you don't balance yourself out by finding the other side and realigning yourself in the present moment for the journey that you're on. Now, to help you with this, I'd like to offer you a little perspective. Regardless of how you label yourself, you are actually neither old or young. You are both. Right now, you are the oldest that you've ever been and the youngest that you'll ever be. Likewise with your speed, you're neither fast nor slow. You are both. If you compare yourself with a more experienced, fitter, stronger and faster version of you, then you'll think today's performance was slow. If you compare yourself with a less experienced version of you who just learned to ride for the first time, you will think that today's performance was incredibly fast because the reality is you are both. You are on a journey and if you continue to work towards your goals, build on your skills, today is simply where you're at. Your results are neither good nor bad. They're just an indication of where you're at, where you can go and how far you've come. So it's not about dimming your light when you win. It's about genuinely appreciating your effort and the work it took to get you there feeling satisfied in the moment and then allowing that feeling to pass through you so that you can create again at the next level of your journey. Because one day, the goals that you set yourself for today, they'll be your norm. The goalposts will shift and you'll be on to the next one. But please, don't forget to enjoy this moment. Even though we can't make it last forever, we can be grateful for the experience and create a memory that'll last a lifetime. So that's how I'll end this one today. Like always, I have so much more I can build off this, but I'll save that for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you being here and I'll be back here next Wednesday for another episode of Our Mind Gym. Have a wonderful week. If you have been enjoying this podcast and are ready to dive deeper, release your own mental blocks and see for yourself what life is like with more ease and flow. I would like to personally invite you to click the link below and book in your free strategy session. During this 30 minutes together, we will identify the top three things that are holding you back and create a customized action plan for you to move forward. Take action now and start thriving on and off the track.